Hey, this is Glenn Drover, and you're watching LoudGuitars.com. I think it started with, with uh, Mike Metal, Show My Family. And uh, I really don't know the exact story, but I think what happened was he probably talked to Nick at Dungeon and, and said, hey, you know, you can get Glenn or, you know, he's in Toronto and get him to come, come as one of the judges. And I think that's where it kind of came from. And Jeff did last month, as you know, and then here I am. Very nice. Well, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Um, did a little bit of homework. You're quite the accomplished and well-traveled guitar player. Metallusions. I, uh, Metallusion, I beg your pardon. Right. Um, had a chance to listen to the record and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. What was it like working on an instrumental after your experiences with Megadeth and King Diamond? Um, it's different in the way because it's more free form to a point. Although there is heavy structure, it wasn't like you know the typical. You're in a metal band and, and here's the here's the format: metal, metal, metal. So we can kind of do whatever we want. So we, we had all kinds of different influences come into the picture: prog, jazz fusion, metal, rock, whatever it is, you know. And, and, and it was probably not only because of me growing up with this kind of music, but the other music, musicians in the band. Jim from uh, from Saga, who was more of a prog. I mean, jog, it, Saga is more of a kind of a prog power kind of uh, um, melodic kind of band. So he brought those elements in, and he's great with writing instrumental music, killer. And uh, Chris Sutherland, who plays with Kim Mitchell, is just he's very in tune with a lot of this kind of music that, in the direction that we wanted to go into and was able to complement that. As well as the bass player, Paul Yee, they're just all killer musicians. And we were able to come together and really make something that was very cohesive. And uh, the amazing thing about that was that it's, it's not easy to find these kind of musicians and, and bring them into one room and it all works. But I did with that combination. And how did you go about that? Did you say to them, like, let's get together and jam on a few no, ideas? No, not at all. What, what, I, I, I phoned Chris first. He was the first guy I contacted uh, after leaving Megadeth after a few few months or so. I wanted to get back into doing something but more self-indulgent and instrumental. And uh, he understood the direction I wanted to go in. And he suggested Jim Gilmore from Saga and his buddy Paul Yee from uh, from where he used to live in, in Winnipeg. Saying, you know, these guys are killer, you know, they'll totally get this whole thing. And, and um, it was all done through computer, you know? Okay, remote, um, one person in each location. Right, right, wow, right, right. Okay. But I mean, because, again, I got lucky because, I mean, it's it's one of those things where, you know, a lot of times you have to be in the same room to really understand where, where everybody's going. We got away with it uh, without having to to do that. And um, got lucky and, and came up with an album that we're extremely proud of. And you should be. It yeah. Is, it is a brilliant record. Yeah. We did actually just finished, the, 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 there's a live DVD coming out in June. Oh, oh, nice. We did a webcast back in uh, late summer of last year. So. And so that's coming out on DVD. Right. Now, you, I, I read that you did, you added a track, you offered up a track to a band by the name of Lion Share. A solo. A solo. Yeah, so okay. It was actually a band that one of the guys used to work at a, 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 a record company called Escapi out of Sweden, and who did the last Eidolon record. Because Eidolon, we did most of our albums through Metal Blade, but the last record we did after we finished our contract with Metal Blade, we signed with these guys for one record right before we joined Megadeth. Okay. Thank God we only did sign for one album because you know me and Sean got really busy with Megadeth, and then everything changed. Okay, so that that. So that was, it, came, it came from that. You say, "Hey, Glenn, can you play a solo?" I wasn't involved with the band. He played a solo. For now, was that the first time that you recorded something remotely and sent it to somebody? Was that no. where you no. thought no? Okay. There's been other. There's been other. You know, local bands or, or bands from overseas that asked me to do a solo spot, 
you know, and I love doing that. I love that whole concept of being able to do that. Somebody sends you an MP3, you can put a solo over it, send a wave over, then they import it and then they place it. It's a really cool concept. Is that how you work with Stefan Absolutely. Forte? Absolutely. Okay. Has your gear changed a lot over the years? Um, well, it has, but I mean, I, 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 I pretty much use this a lot of the same gear that I was using from about 2007 uh, before I left Mag Megadeth, I was using the uh, this rack now called the 1101 from Digitech, which I swear by is the best preamp on the planet, period. Um, so I've been using that in conjunction with, you know, different amps, um, Randall, Dime, um, and it sounds great. Love it. Very versatile, you know, killer amp, killer preamp. And how about, do you have a preference for pickups, strings? Yeah, Seymour Duncan. I've been with Seymour for over a decade, easily. Uh, I use the uh, the distortion, Duncan distortion in the uh, the bridge position, and in, in the neck I use the 59. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you do when you have an idea for a song? How do you remember it? Do you do you hum it into an iPhone? No, I just I just go downstairs because I have a full blown studio in my house. Okay. So I just go record something and, and just save it. And go okay. back to it later and go, yeah, it's cool or not, it sucks or you know whatever. And, so you're never too far away no, from no, something no, no, to record No, 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 it's on. very easy to do that. Very easy to record what I have in my head. Okay. So it's not the old, the old school way of recording it on a little tape, tape recorder. No. <laughs> uh, any plans for touring? No. At this point, there's no plans for actually doing a tour. Um, we're looking at doing the next CD at this point. Uh, like I mentioned, we have the DVD coming out in June, which we're really excited about. It came up really well. Naming songs on an instrumental album. Do you have an idea? Do you have the idea for the name of the song and the music wraps around that, or does the song title evolve? It does. It does because I'll come up with some kind of a initial working title, and then I'll find something that best suits the atmosphere of the song or what it calls for. Is that it's a long process for you? Nah, nah it's easy. Yeah, okay, so it's not something it's easy that you fun. labor over. Yeah. All right, and how about uh, in the studio itself? Um, what's the order of business? You get the, the drum tracks down, right. what goes next? Drums, guitars come after that, and then we get into keyboards usually, and then the bass. Okay. And then we start editing things and putting things together and making sure the song is structured the way we want, want it to be. And I spend a lot of time analyzing, just listening, you know, I just, I'll be in the car with a CD, I'll make a CD, my car still has a CD player, and um, I'll just kind of analyze the whole thing and, and, and making sure that the songs are, are growing, okay. to, you know, on me, to, and I'm like, still liking them. If not, we ditch it, you know, and, uh, and that, that's also another thing, it, it spawns other ideas as well. So as you evolve in a song, you, just, you get other ideas and stuff, so it's all part of that process. I spent quite a bit of time in the last album doing that, and um, I think it really worked. Was it hard when it came down at time to narrow down which songs were going to make the record? Did you know right away? No, we they all made it. All the songs one. that we worked on made it, and, and any one of those could have been mixed. And uh, we ended up keeping all those songs. Oh, that's beautiful. That's yeah. when you know that there's some magic. Yeah, exactly. Working. It's just the way it worked out, but I have no problem ditching a song because it's not holding up, you know, to the rest of them. So. What was the last piece of gear that you came across that made you all excited and skippy and you couldn't wait to play with? The 1101. The 1101? By Digitech, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hands down. Would you have a piece of advice for any aspiring guitar players in today's market? Yeah, practice and just don't worry about all that, you know, we have a lot of problems in the industry with people, you know, all the thievery and stuff like that. I think it's most important for guys to concentrate on, you have to have a product no matter what, and just get out there and just play your hearts out, you know, come up with, you know, make your own shirts, get some merch going, I mean, if you think about the cash thing, you know, you got to do that, um, but you have to have an initial product, no matter what, Absolutely. so just follow your, you know, your dreams with that, and, and I think any band that's hungry enough will do that. Okay, brilliant, well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us today. No problem.